the day after a ride I'm going to do some basic chain maintenance on the thruxton so we're going to set the uh, tension of the chain but we're going to give it a good clean so we need to take this off right to get at the front sprocket I had to detach the coolant reservoir which were two nuts here and here which are up here then I had to unclip a cable unclip a cable from the sprocket cover here so I have to remember to put that back there the fixing points for the reservoir then I had to undo this screw above the sensor as a, a bolt so I had to undo that but the purpose of getting at this is one check the condition of uh, that front sprocket and if I'm honest that looks worn it looks like that's got shark fins so I probably need a new front sprocket and clean up all the crud in here and the crud in here nobody likes it messy job that's that area cleaned up all the gunk out be very careful of this bit of cable here I've been gentle down here I'll just flush that out because it's just grit but that cable there not sure what it is but it's very delicate a bit strange they've got something like that and it looks like it goes well into the engine so you don't want to mess on with that bit now for the really messy bit is getting all of this gunk off now a lot of people will use a screwdriver for that that scratches the plastic and uh, makes it harder to clean in the future so I use the old finger after I've given it a good lubrication. Right, that looks a little bit different. Now we've got the same job to do with the chain guard. I've had that steeping in WD-40 for a bit. That's that after a quick clean. Right, I'm going to start with the sprocket cover. I did leave that in because it's holding this bit of plastic in and it's to remind me the sprocket cover goes behind this bit of plastic the cover goes on this way up and this is the piece we have to tuck behind here which is it right so this cable clamp goes underneath this cable and this tucks in behind that bit of plastic so you've got a bolt there a bolt down here behind this cable so we'll put them all back in tighten it up so this one you don't put a bolt in because it's held on by the cover so this one and this one need to be torqued to seven newton meters now i'm going to hook this clip back over yeah Right, for these two nuts, you're supposed to use new lock nuts, uh, which I haven't got, and I'm not going to. I need to tighten them up to three newton meters. So this only goes as low as four, so they're getting tightened up to four. Next job is to refit this cover. Give it a quick clean inside. Give it a buff up on the outside when it's uh, refitted. Okay, so these nuts are done to nine newton meters. And these we talk up to seven newton meters. That's done. So with the chain guard off, we've got much better access to the chain. Now then, what do you use to clean your chain? You can use bespoke chain cleaners, they're great. Despite the arguments, you can use WD-40. It has been proven not to affect your O-rings and X-rings. Um, you can use paraffin or kerosene, that's really smelly. Uh, you can get that in garden centers quite cheap in the UK. Um, or you can use a multi-purpose uh, cleaner
So I'm going to leave that just to soak for two minutes, just to penetrate the, the grime. And then I'm just using a straightforward chain brush. Don't spend a lot of money on these. Use them five or six times, throw them away. You can get a pack of five for about a tenner off Amazon. But spend more money, it'll last a bit longer, but five or six uses, throw them away, use another one. The chain brushes come in different sizes and there should be a good fit. You can see there, that's a tight fit. So I'm putting it on this way first and because of the three sides of the brush, it's cleaning both sides of the chain and the top. Um, probably sideways down here. Put the thing sideways so it's clean in the bottom. Now there's two ways you can do this. You can either just hold that in place and spin the uh, wheel round, which is good. But I like to move the brush backwards and forwards as well because then it's really attacking it from every direction. Once we've done that, spray some more cleaner off. Now I'm just going to hold it on here so it does the inside face of the chain. So why didn't I just do it here, which a lot of people do, and that's because these bristles at the back can't go in as deep as the, the wood because the sprocket teeth poke through. So I prefer to do it on a bit of open chain where these bristles here can get in between the uh, rollers. So the next step is just to give that another rinse for cleaner, dry it off and then apply the lubricant. So this is my preferred chain maintenance spray. So it's um, worth high performance dry chain lube, less fling, uh, probably needs applying more frequently than some of the others but it does a really good job so you give the can a good shake and then spray it on all the surfaces of the chain right we'll leave that some of that will drip off but we'll leave it for a bit and then we'll just give it a wipe to get the excess off i'm just going to fit the chain guard now that goes back on, quite simple. And we do them up to nine Newton meters. The process is the bike should be upright with no weight on it for setting the uh, the slack. So if you haven't got a front wheel chock, you'll need someone to hold the bike for you. That nut is meant to be 27 mil, but with that socket on, a lot of play. And I never like that. With this socket, there's hardly any play. And this is a, a 1 and 1 16th Imperial. I just loosened off the axle, not completely, just enough. So it's not, it's not tight, but it's not loose, if you know what I mean. There's definitely a gap. See, the adjuster there is wobbling, so that means we're good to go. And I've got a uh, a 12 and a 13 mil spanner so the first thing to do is to loosen off this lock nut you do that with the 13 mil spanner do that on the other side And then to push the wheel back, we're going to unscrew this. So I turn this anti-clockwise, it pushes that screw out, which pushes the wheel back, which then tightens the chain. So that's where the 12 mm spanner comes into play, and we do equal amounts both sides. Check the chain tension. You can see that's tightened up quite a bit. So we'll go and check the length. We're after a slack of 20 to 30 millimeters in the middle of the chain, which is around about here. So you're not going to see that, are you? Yeah. 
So that's sitting on seven. And when we go up, it goes to five. So that's 20. So what I've learned from doing this is when you tighten the wheel up, it sometimes adjusts the chain adjustment. So I am going to tighten that wheel up quite tight now, not fully torqued, just to make sure that it's uh, not suddenly gone a lot tighter. And then I'm going to slacken it off a tiny bit and we're going to align the chain. So I have this laser tool that allows you to shine a laser down the length of your chain and you can see the length of the chain, whether it's moving and um, the line's moving in or out against your chain. And it tells you which side of the wheel to tighten, tighten up. So if it's this way, it means the right hand side is further back than the left. So you need to move the right hand forward a bit and the left hand back a bit. And if it's this way, it means you need the left hand side forward a bit and the right hand side back a bit to keep the chain, same chain slack. Or you can use these markings on here. They're pretty approximate. I like it to be as accurate as I can get. Right. Finally, we tighten this up to 110 Newton meters. That is the chain cleaned, lubed, tensioned, and the front sprocket area cleaned up.